email from a man named James who I had become friends with after he listened to my interview on Coast to Coast with George Norrie regarding the legend of J.C. Brown. James emailed me a story written by a man who claimed that he had stumbled upon an unusual basalt volcanic rock formation that led to an underground civilization living under Mount Shasta that he called Telos. The article was written by a man known as Bread. Bread claimed that he and his daughter were hiking in the ancient volcanic mountains of Dunsmuir, California, walking off a heavy Thanksgiving dinner from the day before when something extraordinary happened. It was while they were hiking that they discussed the folklore surrounding the Mount Shasta region and the Lemurian civilization said to be living in a massive cave city within the volcanic mountain. Brad and his daughter rounded a corner and came across a rugged basalt rock with two doors. They stopped and took photos. When suddenly a tall figure wearing a long robe greeted them speaking with a slight British accent. Brad and his daughter asked the man where he had come from and he replied, from inside the mountain, the city of Telos. The man said they had found one of the back entrances to Telos, and he graciously invited them in. Even though Brad and his daughter were curious, they were quite frightened, and so they declined. The figure then disappeared as quickly as he had arrived, but before leaving he swore Brad and his daughter both to secrecy, never to reveal the location of the doors to Telos. Brad concluded his story by stating that until this time, he and his daughter considered the Lemurian civilization to be mere folklore. After reading this story, I jotted down in a notebook all the clues I had learned by reading the article. Included with Brad's remarkable story was a photo of the unusual basalt volcanic rock formation. Studying the photo closely, I was of the belief that there were no coincidences in life and that this photo was going to be a key component in my quest to solve the legend of J.C. Brown. For nearly a year I had gone over all the clues. It was my theory that Lord Cowdray and J.B. Body, alias J.C. Brown stumbled upon the basalt volcanic rock formation by accident while vacationing at the Shasta Springs Resort in Dunsmuir, California. The Shasta Springs Resort was located three and a half miles north of Dunsmuir, California. Shasta Springs was the most famous resort located in the upper Sacramento River Canyon. Trains would stop here so passengers could drink the natural spring water. The drinking of Shasta water reported to have beneficial results and was used as a remedial agent. Some of the passengers would disembark on the platforms and head for the Incline Railway which for five cents would take them to the main part of the resort which was situated high above the railroad tracks. It was my belief that Lord Cowdrey and John Benjamin Body were vacationing at the resort. While walking out or near the property they noticed an unusual rock formation. Lord Cowdrey and J.B. Body, geologists by trade, considered this to be an important discovery. They both agreed that they would return at a later date to dig out the tunnel. I then compiled all the information in chronological history of the Shasta Springs Resort. Afterwards I created a file folder on my computer with photos and a map of the property. I printed out a map of the property and studied the map closely. I had a strong feeling that the tunnel I was searching for was either on or near the Shasta Springs Resort. It was now time for me to take the circumstantial evidence that I believed to be correct and traveled to Dunsmuir, California to solve the legend. In April of 2009, on the anniversary of my Coast to Coast interview, I decided to go to Mount Shasta and search for the tunnel. In May, I headed to Dunsmuir to find out Brad's true identity. I was able to get in contact with a longtime resident of Dunsmuir who, as luck would have it, knew Brad very well. The man was kind enough to provide me with Brad's last name and then he gave me Brad's personal email address. Later that evening I shared the information with a friend who I had met in the Mount Shasta area who was also interested in the unusual basalt volcanic rock formation. I gave my friend Brad's email address and asked him to contact him. 
Soon after my friend's email to Brad inquiring about his remarkable story that he posted on the Internet, he was sent the following response dated May 28, 2009. Brad added that the doors indeed close off lava tunnels that go northeast towards Mount Shasta. The tunnels bring glacial waters from Mount Shasta to Dunsmuir. These same tunnels are also the source for Mosprey Falls north of Dunsmuir. Armed with this new information and the map, I began hiking and exploring the area that surrounded where the Shasta Springs Resort was once located. It was on the second day of exploring that I came across the strange looking basalt volcanic rock formation that J.C. Brown had claimed that he had found many years earlier. From the location of this unusual rock formation, it was approximately 11 miles from the base of Mount Shasta, just as J.C. Brown had claimed in his legend. Upon further investigation of the tunnel, I learned that the tunnel had been sealed off and blocked off and now being used to supply the city of Dunsmuir with the water that comes from the glacial mountain of Mount Shasta. My search and quest in solving the legend had taken me over 3,000 miles from New York City to Dunsmuir, California. Who was J.C. Brown? Well, I want to take this time to share it with everyone. My search began in New York City I traveled 3,000 miles to Dunsmuir, California to solve the riddle and the mystery of the legend of J.C. Brown. I will now share with you the man who showed up in 1934 in Stockton, California who claimed to be J.C. Brown. The following are the memoir of John Benjamin Boddy found in the American Society of Civil Engineers Call number ZAN-V1056 that can be found on page 1554. Died May 23, 1940. John Benjamin Body was born on February 27, 1867 at Megavgesi, Cornwell, England. He was the son of John and Mary Ann Harris Body. He was educated at the City of London College under Professor Harry Adams. After six years of training in Great Britain, Mr. Body proceeded to Mexico. His choice of a country in the Western Hemisphere for his work in the profession was the outstanding feature of his career. From the date of that choice until his death, he devoted his professional services to the interests of one firm only. Thus, in 1890 to 1940, he identified himself with the activity of Sir Wheatman Pearson and Son Limited civil engineering contractors. This is the dominant factor of his life, and a recital of the great works executed by that firm in Mexico is necessarily a statement of the achievements of John Benjamin Body in the profession, because under the direction of the late Wheatman D. Pearson, the first Viscount Cowdray, all of these works were brought to fruition. The following are the chief activities in which Mr. Body participated. The drainage of 